All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start with our worksheet. Um, in the link below, you should have a copy of the worksheet. It's called Engineer Design Process. I would put it up on the whiteboard, but it's so faint that I can't even read it from the whiteboard. So I'm just going to read it from the worksheet itself and then just follow along with me. I'm going to go through it. You're going to answer. Uh, I whited out a couple little spots on here, and I want you to fill in the blanks as we go around our little circle of engineering design process. And this has a lot to do with our biodome and how we come about start to finish with the biodome or any project for, is for that matter. So we're going to start with this, okay? <sighs> Let's go. So the first thing that engineering design process and the engineers would like to know is they ask questions. They ask um, to identify the needs and constraints. So what are the needs and the constraints of building the biosphere? There's a lot of them. What we needed it for was we wanted to use the biosphere to um, study how our biosphere one, which is the earth, can work inside the biosphere two, which is a man-made self-contained environment. So they needed to know what our needs were and what our constraints were. So they asked to identify the need. They asked critical questions about what they want to create. What is the problem? What do we want to design? Who it's for? What do we want to accomplish? And what are the project requirements and limitations? What is our goal? What's the overall goal? So those are a lot of questions to ask. A lot of questions that had to be asked of our engineers, scientists, and of actually the, the gentleman that funded the whole program. What do we need? We have to know. If we're going to build it, we got to know everything. Number two. Research the problem. This includes talking to people from many different backgrounds and specialties to assist with re researching that what products and, or solutions already exist or what technologies might be adaptable to your needs. Well, you may not think about this, but you know you don't have to be a scientist or an engineer to know how to grow plants. You don't need to be a scientist or an engineer to work on a car. But you can ask those people, someone even like myself, hey, what kind of ideas would you have to work into our plans to build this biosphere? And they would ask me and I could help them. So, I mean, you do a lot of research. You find out different people, if they've tried something similar to what you're trying to do and take knowledge from them, gain some knowledge. It never hurts. A little bit of knowledge goes a long way. You never know when you'll need it. And number three, imagine possible solutions. Work with the team to brainstorm ideas to develop as many solutions as possible. Encourage wild ideas. We all have those. I know I do. And defer judgment. Stay focused on topic and have one conversation at a time. Good design is all about teamwork. This is so true. Even the silliest thing that you might think is crazy could be the one thing that makes a project work. It's unbelievable what could happen. I'm going to refer real quick to Apollo 13. Um, if mom and dad, if you've watched the video or watched the movie Apollo 13 or even have researched some history on Apollo 13, they were up in space, their oxygen tanks had blown, they um, were depleted of oxygen, the um, carbon dioxide became a major factor if they didn't come up with some kind of system to um, scrub, as they call it, scrub the carbon dioxide out, our astronauts would have died, we never would have you know, been able to bring them back. Um, the NASA engineers all brainstormed in one room. They gathered everybody, I mean, anybody and everybody that had any kind of idea. And the only thing they could use to build this carbon dioxide scrubber was what was in the actual spaceship thousands and thousands of miles away. And what blows my mind is the simplest things are what brought our astronauts home. And I will tell you what they are. My number one go-to favorite thing in the house, duct tape a sock, the front cover of a flight manual, which is pretty thick, um, a plastic bag that they had something in, the oxygen tube off of one of their flight suits, and they combined a carbon dioxide scrubber and were able to hook it in their system 
and it scrubbed out the carbon dioxide and started producing oxygen so we could bring our astronauts home. Brainstorming, when they, if you watch the movie, they walk in and they just throw all these things on the table and go, okay guys, there it is. That's all we have to work with. Let's make it happen. And they did. It was phenomenal. And that's what brainstorming does. So when we build, as they did um, for the biosphere and the Eden Project, there was a lot of brainstorming going on. A lot of brainstorming. And again, no questions are silly. Um, you don't want to be judgmental of what somebody has to say or their idea because it could be the very thing that could make a project work. You want to keep it positive. You just want to talk one at a time because when everyone's talking, you don't get anything accomplished. But when you listen, something might trigger another brainstorm idea. So let's see. Number four, plan by selecting a solution. Revisit the needs, constraints, and research from earlier steps. Compare your best ideas, select one solution, and make a plan to move forward. That's so important. We have a lot of ideas. Put them on the table. Let's see which one's going to work the best. And then we're all going to, you know, weed out what we don't think is going to work and then work on that plan. Just work on that plan together. Then we want to create a prototype, which is number five. Building a prototype makes your ideas real. Yeah. You're like, whoa, that's going to be really cool on a very large scale. So you build a prototype. Early versions of a design solution help your team verify whether the needs, the design meets the original challenge objects, objectives. I'm sorry. Push yourself for creativity, imagination, and excellence in design. Do your best. Do your best. Throw it out there. Someone's gonna like, or someone's thinking along the same lines you are. So create a prototype. Someone's like, that is just not going to work, that just looks horrible. But what does the rest of the team think? What do the rest of the designers, what do the rest of the engineers think? Is it workable? Is it doable? It could work. And then number six is test the prototype. Does it work? Does it solve the need? Well, in the biosphere, everything they did in the biosphere in um, the Tucson, or not Tucson, I'm sorry, the Arizona project, um, biosphere there, Everything worked great for a while, and then some things started happening, and then they had to go back and revisit. The designers and the engineers had to go back and revisit what could possibly have gone wrong with our agriculture for our food, um, how we sustain our, ourselves nutritionally, and how could we have changed our oxygen issue. And then number seven, which is our last one on this page, is improve and redesign. So once all our biospherians came out of Biosphere 2, yes, there was a lot of things that were changed. A lot of things, obviously, we took the human mankind out. And we made it livable just for our plants and species. Um, I did state yesterday, and I actually had to go back and revisit it, but I did state yesterday that there was no large breed animals within the biosphere. And actually, I did find that they had a goat and they used the goat for goat milk, and they used it for um, to make cheese for their pizzas. So but that took months and months and months, but I, I did want to just put that in there. I found that. I was like, how did you get goat cheese if they didn't have a goat? So found that one. Anyway, so again, prove, improve and redesign, and I iterate your design. Sit down, and I iterate it over and over and over again. Keep looking at it. See if there's a way that you can improve it, the way it can be improved. Whether you do it or somebody else might come up with an idea, and jump on it. Try it. You just never know if what you think might work. Okay? So that is our worksheet on engineering design and process. Again, I apologize for not being able to get it up on the board, but please print it out. Fill in the blanks and submit it to me, okay? You can email it to me. That's ginger at solidrockcs.org, and I will be more than happy to grade these. If you have any questions, just jump on or email me at any time, okay? So we're going to finish this, and now we're going to go on to um, our slide number seven, and then we're going to go into a video, okay? We'll see you in just a few.